Hello everyone, my name is Carol and welcome aboard to Knitting on the Hook. In this video, I went out of my comfort zone and attempted to route a pattern that could be understood by others than myself and you will find the instruction in the description below. I've also included in the video some schematics with all the measurements that can be used as a visual aid if you decide to knit the pattern. Remember to do your swatches in stockinette stitch as well as in pattern A so that your measurements are close to the one in the pattern. So let's have a look. These are the symbols that I use on the schematic. This is an eyelet symbol indicating that the stitch has to be transferred to the right. You have your purl, your knit, double twisted stitch with the transfer tool rotating to the right and double twisted stitch with the transfer tool indicating twisting to the left. Down here is the schematic for the pattern that I used on the garment. The little squares indicate stitches on the horizontal and the squares on the vertical indicates the rows. So on the first row we're going to be knitting, second row we're going to be purling two stitches double twisted stitch with the transfer tool uh, rotating to the left, row 3 we're going to knit, row 4, purl 2 stitches, double twisted stitch, transfer tool rotating to the right. This is the schematic for the back. You're going to be casting on 44 stitches, 22 to the right and 22 to the left. And you're going to be working in pattern A all the way up to row counter 80 and then you will be casting off. This is the schematic for the sleeve. You're going to be casting on 25 stitches, 12 to the right and 13 to the left. You're going to be working in pattern A for 8 rows and then increasing one stitch each side at row counter 10, 20, 30, 40, and you're going to be casting off at row counter 50. Because we're going to be seaming the edges of the sleeves later on and I wanted to maintain a nice continuity in pattern A, I slightly changed the order where we start with one purl and finish with a double twisted stitch. This is the schematic for the front of the garment. This is the center of the needle bed and you're going to cast on 18 stitches to the left. Needle 1 and needle 18 are the edge stitch so they remain untouched. You're going to work in pattern A for 8 rows and continue on to row counter 16 in pattern A but only use needle 2, 3, 4 and 5. Row counter 16 you're going to increase 5 stitches using the ERAP method and you're at this point going to be on the right side of the needle bed so it's going to be 5R for the right side and you're going to be purling 4 right or 4R um, every other row uh, to help prevent the edge of the button bend from curling in. Once you reach row counter 52 you're going to cast off 5 stitches to finish the top of the button bend, continue in pattern to row counter 60, cast off 4 more stitches and then you're going to de decrease 1 stitch every other row 4 times until you reach row counter 70 where you're going to cast off. The same principle applies for the left of the cardigan, the only difference is you're working in mirror image. And we also have to create the buttonholes, so on row counter 22, 34, and 46 you will create some eyelets. If your stitch and row gauge is similar to mine you should be able to arrive to the same measurements that I have. If it's slightly different you may have to modify the numbers of stitches to cast on or the numbers of rows to knit and you will find my gauges in the description below. In my double twisted stitch tutorial You've noticed that the transfer tool rotates to the left and it creates a corkscrew effect. For this pattern, I am alternating the rotation 
of the transfer tool from left to right, and this creates a serpentine effect. This is a schematic of the order that I use when seaming the garment together. First, I will do the front and the back shoulders, find the center of the sleeve, and line it up with the edge of the shoulder seam. Seam the top of the sleeve to this portion of the body, do the back side with the front side, and finally, the edge of the sleeve. I hope you found this video informative and if you need additional help on some of the methods used to knit the garment, you can always go to my channel and review the tutorials. Thank you for watching Knitting on the Hook. Bye for now.